So this is an example of a bug intake where we're gonna allow the users to come in and share where they think they found a bug. This is a simple form where we're going to have them select the product family, which down selects to the product based on that first selection. It's using our cascading functionality powered by assets. Now we're gonna ask them a few things that can help us triage and replicate what they're seeing. Again, using the power of forms, dynamically asking additional questions where relevant. This means you can tailor these requests and avoid long drawn out forms that users usually feel don't apply to them. And all of this is completely configurable, no code required. In this example, I've included a field that allows me to associate customers to this. This can be used for different reasons, understanding business impact, influencing risk. As you're developing a fix or if this were an enhancement, you could also use this to understand who could validate that fix or who you could pull into an EAP or candidates for betas. So we're gonna go ahead and submit this and let's take a look from this port team's point of view. Now we see that it was for the Dash Loop suite. We can see which companies that were linked here. We also have automatically attached a checklist for our triager to help them go about their work. This can help ensure that the right information and checks are done before ever coming back over to the developers. Right, we're gonna give them the information and knowledge articles, all the action, all to make sure it truly is a bug. Now, once they've done their work, whatever that process is, we're using automation to route this to the right team and project when they validate it, all based on attributes against the selections they made for the product. Now, you'll see it'll automatically push to that in development status and raise a corresponding linked bug for the platform team in Jira software. So without this triage person needing to do anything additional, the information has been shared with development, yet no loss of details, right into their project, no pivot or extra effort on their part either. So let's take a look as that Jira software user. Christopher's part of this platform team. You can see he can add it to a sprint, he can work on it as he would, and he's gonna have all of that context there to do his portion of the work and deliver the fix. So one of the top questions we get on this is, does Christopher here, the Jira software user, need a Jira service management license? The answer is no in this case. As a collaborator, he can be a member of the engineering support team, which grants him visibility and limited permissions. He can click through to see the originating request, and he can see all these details. He can even comment internally on the ticket. So you don't actually need to push through all the information like you saw earlier. It really just depends on how you want to work. All right, so as developers, you're doing your work, you got your head down, but those ops people might be bugging you about needing visibility of what you're doing, or even asking that they get to approve your work before you deploy. Now, I don't think anyone is opposed to visibility, of course, we all want that, but where it can get frustrating is when you have to not only do the work, but then go around telling everyone about the work you did while new work just piles up. That's where deployment tracking and deployment gating are your friends. Now, I'm gonna edit this file here in my web store repo, and we're gonna see deployment tracking in action. Deployment tracking allows you to do your work as normal, but will automatically create the corresponding change requests when you initiate deployments to selected services. You'll notice I used our smart commit feature to link this back to the Jira software issue. And once I fire that off, it's gonna commit those changes to the repo. Now let's take a look at the pipeline page and we'll see it in progress. Let's see the details. And you can see I've got it queued for test, staging, and production. Okay, everything is looking good. Now instead of having to go somewhere and log what I just did, let's take a look at the ops queue. Notice I have automatically raised and closed change tickets for these. We didn't have to do anything extra, but now Ops gets the visibility they need, and I'll show you how this all surfaces up in the next section, but we didn't have to disrupt our workflow as those developers to tell them. Now you can see that they have all the deployment details right here, the related ones because I added for each environment. And then thanks to that smart linking, we've also auto linked this change to the software issue as well. It also allows them to quickly launch into Bitbucket in context assuming they have access, of course, if maybe they need to redeploy or just check out the details of who committed that. 